Ham, the player Benton. Xavier Hill was my son. He was murdered by the Staple League on January the 9th, 2021. All he was murdered by DC Metropolitan the Police in their custody. He died in their custody and they claim that they don't know what happened. They had they had no business arresting him. This is Life After the Impact, a podcast for impacted families by impacted families that focuses on what happens after the media, the lawyers, and the activists are gone. Impacted families are left to face uh, the loss of a loved one who police sponsored violence. We will focus on their continued fight for justice and how you can get involved. The one just walks away. Watch your police take another life today. Leave a loved one's torn to the left to say. Candles burning. Every day you pray. Yeah. Yeah, because I think if you turn them off, that, that means you're guilty, period. Well, and, and I saw an interview when I, in regards to my son because, you know, Kim Potter came in after my son's murder and told those officers to turn their body-worn cameras off. Okay. And when I saw uh, one of the news stories about one of the people on the other side talking about it, this is what he said. He said the reason for the body-worn cameras is to capture the interaction with the public. So his logic was once that murder's happened and then we've turned it off, then we're done dealing with the public. Now we're, you know, trying to do our little cover up. <laughs> my words, my words. Damage control. We're trying to damage control. Damage control. Yeah. yeah. But as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, being in that situation, it's as important as to see what happened that took my son from me, but it's almost as important or, or more important to see what happened exactly afterwards. Mm -hmm. Good evening, everybody. My name is Roxanne Johnson. My son's name is Jamal Bird. I'm here with my wonderful co-host this evening, Latoya. Hey, how you doing, Latoya? Hey, good evening, guys. I am Latoya Benton. I am the mother of the beautiful Xavier Hill. Xavier was killed at the age of 18 by two Virginia State Troopers. We are honored to be joined tonight by Mr. Oscar Avina. Oscar, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, please? Yes, hello, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Oscar Urbina, father of uh, Ruben Urbina. He was murdered on the um, on September fifteenth, twenty seventeen, um, by the Prince William County Police here in the state of Virginia. Well, we're glad to have you um, this evening, Mr. Oscar. Can you tell us of what happened on the day that your son? was um, tragically um, lost. Yeah, he, he um, recently we spoke to the DA and we told him exactly what happened. On that morning, uh, he woke up uh, and he told mom he wasn't feeling well. He, he told my wife that he wasn't going to school. So my wife said, okay, because that was, uh, that, that's, that was not normal for him. He always went to school, but you know, he saw, um, my wife told him that's fine. So he was very calm, very, just, just let them the same room. And um, my wife was cooking that morning and, 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 uh, and, and she, she asked him if he wanted some eggs. And of course he was, you know, in good spirits. And he said, yes, so they ate breakfast. Uh, maybe, I don't know the timing, but maybe at around 8 a.m. or 8.30. So they ate breakfast like nothing ever happened. And then, um, you know, then 30 minutes, I say 39, 9 a.m. My, uh, his, he told my wife that he was gonna go for a walk. And, uh, and my wife said, okay. Uh, but the context, I mean, besides that in the background, we didn't know that my, my son was, um, uh, was on the phone all this time. Uh, the, the night before started a conversation. He was on the cell phone with, with this girl 
that then he, he was he was dating. Uh, my wife tells me that that the girl on this is on um, uh, the night before there was uh, there was a conversation going on between my between Ruben and the girl, and I I think they were fighting or arguing, and my wife thinks that they, they broke up, oh. and they broke up the night before, and. And and that continued. I guess they they continued the conversation until the following day, but my wife did 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 not know that they were talking early in the morning. When he when he decided that he wasn't going to go to school, he was still on that conversation. He was so emotional beforehand. Yes. So that that's the context. That's that's what my wife now knows. At that time, of course, she didn't know. That morning when he when they ate together breakfast, but uh, he had something going on. I, I think when he um, when he say when he said that he was gonna take a uh, was gonna take a walk, that's when I guess I guess he um, really started putting together the things that he was planning on doing, and uh, he started he, uh, you know within within the next thirty minutes that's when all happened because this is exactly when he when he was killed. It must have been 10 30. So think about it. He was eating breakfast at 8 30. Mm -hmm. And two hours later, he was dead. Uh, mm -hmm. After after eating breakfast and told my wife, he went, he went, he disappeared for a little bit. And I think that's when he was making a call to the police. Uh, my wife obviously didn't know that was taking place down, down there in the basement. Ruben, Ruben had called the police and told, told them that. Um, he was. He had a, a a bomb, and he was trying to uh, hurt the my wife and his brother and my brothers and my my other son's girlfriend. And so he called the police, and um, obviously all this all these things were happening. No one knew uh, at that time. I wasn't home. I was traveling. I was in Mexico, um, but. Um, and then in the next, you know, it, it, it went so fast. In the next few minutes, uh, Ruben went downstairs with a crowbar in the basement because he, he is the only one who knew that the police were, were being called mm -hmm. and that the police were the police were was coming. No, 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 no one knew. He was just um, with a crowbar with a crowbar. And, uh, and at that time, my wife did not understand his behavior. And and he was uh, he wasn't aggressive or nothing. He was just asking, "What are you doing?" And he was saying, "Don't don't don't come close to me. Don't 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 touch me. Don't." Um, I I uh, he he told my wife that he was waiting. That's when they find out. I said, "I'm waiting for the police to shoot me." Mm -hmm. And and um, so they they all went downstairs because he was standing right there, like waiting for the police in in the in the uh, downstairs in the garage, mm -hmm. and. Um, they didn't know obviously what was going on, and the, my 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 older son and Anna, my my other son girlfriend, thought that he was um, joking, or they didn't know what's going on. And Anna was telling him, "Come on, Ruben, you know, just laughing. Come on, Ruben, no one is gonna shoot you. Come on, but you you you're nuts. What what you talking about?" But, but they didn't know that he police he was on his way, so. Uh, when the when the, as soon as the police arrived, Anna Anna saw that when the police arrived, Ruben Ruben uh, went uh, uh, make you know in advance went to walk towards them, and and Anna got in the way, and and that's when uh, Ruben told her don't 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 come close don't stop me don't come close to me, but obviously Anna Anna was trying to. So you know to stop him, and that's when Ruben. They, they say that Ruben uh, stroke her with the crowbar, mm -hmm. and um, my wife at that. Well, before this happened, uh, when when they find out that he, the police were coming, my wife was there with Ruben in the garage, keeping an eye on him. But when she find out that they were coming, uh, she said uh, she thought about going upstairs and change clothing because she was wearing pajamas, and she said I'm, I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna go upstairs and change because when the police over, gets over here, I guess we're gonna take him to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And and then uh, that's when she she went uh, upstairs when she heard the first pop. 
And uh, um, and then uh, when she heard that, she she never got to change anything. So she ran downstairs and was on her way to the downstairs, she heard the second pop. And when she came out, when she came out to the garage they had, had across the street, that's, he saw Ruben, you know, uh, on the floor uh, dying. Mm. And then, you know, she, came out and told the, the guy with the skull on his gun, well, what are you, what are you, she asked the guy, why, why you shoot, uh, what are you, why, she said, what are you doing, why are you shoot him? And then the guy, the guy told her, well, because he asked me to. And this is, this is <laughs> but again, you got, got to remember that all this is that there were no cameras at that time. Right, right. So it sounds like, um, um, Mr. Oscar, that your son was having a mental health crisis. He was having some kind of mental health crisis. And when the police showed up, was he a threat in any way to the police? No, he wasn't. And that's, that's what, you know, uh, that's, that's the thing that the, when we went to, when Latoya and us, we wanted to tell the, the, the community, we wanted to tell the whole world that because for five years, we, we, Wait, we never, don't make any Hold on, go fast. So we're gonna we're gonna fast forward to that. So to, just to break it. So what happened in the case to kind of catch everybody up? The DA at the time, um, what was his name, Oscar? I can't remember his name again. Who was the guy? Paul. Name? Yeah, Paul Everett. Paul. Now that DA, I want you to tell everybody how long was that DA? How long was he in office when this happened to Ruben? He'd been in the office 50, 52 years. Fifty-two years 52 mm -hmm. years you all 52 years Roxanne at the end of every podcast she loves to say all the time about we have to be voting because this is the reason why There's, the DA was an office for 52 years 52 years and after only I'm going to Oscar tell it Oscar how long did it take for the DA to make the decision about our movement's case uh, it must have been like, well, she, I'm surprised that she allowed us there because you left within an hour, I think. But we continue there like she almost like, gave us the three hours. No, no, That's no, no. That. no, the first DA, the one who. Had oh, been oh, oh, the, the, yeah, Mr. Uh, I, I, I don't call him Mr. Nothing. He's for me, it's just an animal. But yeah, he it, they took him. It, yeah, it took him four days. Four days. After four days of a so-called investigation, he decided not to indict the officers. Four right. days. Four days. Having a mental health crisis. And, and because they, you know, you remember um, that they, we always talk about and when, whenever all of us have a conversation, either on this platform or any others, uh, I, it, it always, always the, 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 the thing about um, they, they, uh, the police investigate themselves. Absolutely, it always comes up because in reality, it's really, it's really absurd. That, yeah. but, in rea in reality, that's what it happened when they kill, when they, when they, when they kill our loved ones. They go, they go behind doors, and it's just themselves. Mm -hmm. And then they decide, you know, then they decide that, you know, that we're not going to indict the officers because it's one of ours, of course. And that's how they plan how to, want, you know, they say, well, okay, now, well, how are we going to present this case to the public? Because after they make a decision, they go in a press conference to yeah. tell, you know, and, and all the local channels are there, you know, to broadcast the, the whatever decision they made to the whole public. So that's the narrative that the public gets. Mm -hmm. But in reality, in, in reality, I remember. I, well, I don't know if I'm if I'm going to um, forward, but I remember the new DA when when we were talking to her. I remember she was very upset when we she was very upset when we were telling her our story, and she was so upset and I said, "How can?" And she said, "How can this be? Police well, investigating themselves." Mm -hmm. You know, she was so upset. It's like she gets it. So we're gonna move forward. Um, let's tell everybody what happened. So recently, um, what happened in the case, Oscar? As far as well, this happened, what six years ago, correct? Yeah, six years ago. It's gonna be this in this coming September. It's gonna be six years. So, had on you and your family. We know that it's been like strenuous. What have you guys done recently in Ruben's case to help move forward to make some kind of change? Let's talk about that. 
Well, you, you know, from uh, within the, um, uh, uh, what, what do you call uh, the, the terms, uh, limitations? You know, we got so many to, to file to file a lawsuit on That's the table, on the, the statute, statute of limitations. We did file uh, within the two years, mm -hmm. but the, the lawyer that the, the, the Mexican embassy gave us never really did anything from, uh, after he filed, nothing was well, nothing was done, and then uh, during I don't remember exactly, maybe 2018. That's when the pandemic came, mm -hmm. and all the cases were backed up in the court systems, and obviously there was there was no there was no movement uh, right after we filed. But anyhow, it's been five years. It, it's been it's been almost five years, and finally, uh, because nothing was happening, I decided to confront or to have a very honest conversation with the lawyer and uh, and ask him, "Hey, uh, Mr. O'Malley, what's what's going on?" And of course, we had that we had that conversation with the lawyer uh, the day the day before we met with the the new DA, mm -hmm. and pretty much he. Um, he told us he's, you know, he hasn't done he hasn't done anything because he um, he wanted to um, talk to us about strategies strategies to 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 go forward to move forward with the case. Which in, in reality, it doesn't make any sense to me because why wait why wait five years mm -hmm. to call us you know to call us into the office and say hey guys. I got something important to you. Let's sit down and talk about this case. So the whole thing he told us uh, it doesn't really what it doesn't really make any sense. I think in reality, what he he's he's not interest he's he is not interested in the case because maybe he doesn't have um, he doesn't think there's gonna be money uh -huh. to to get an, on a settlement. And I think. I think I was telling Latoya the only reason I think he stood he uh, was uh, was to with us all this time is because he probably was monitored by the people who um, refer him to us, which is the uh, the Mexican. I think he worked for the Mexican embassy, and I think he was he wasn't um, he was not telling them that, that he hasn't done anything. So he he only entertained us, you know, just uh, just let time pass by and. Uh, and know that you know, and I guess in the background, telling telling the embassy that he's still working with us, but in reality, he wasn't. I don't think he uh, he has any int intentions on doing anything because you know it's almost five years. Yeah. Our name for people like that they call ambulance chasers. Yes, They're looking for a quick payday. Yeah. So, uh, so tell us what what happened when you met with the new district attorney. So so. The, the guy who was in there for 52 years, he retired, right? Yes. All right. And so a new district attorney was installed I guess, a couple of years ago. You had asked for a meeting with her. How, what happened? Okay. We went in there. For, but first of all, I was very uh, pleased that she, she replied. She, when, I, when I sent her the email, she replied like within on the same day. Mm -hmm. And she gave me the appointment almost almost like the following week. Right. So to me, to me, it was very uh, um, surprising because I was not expecting uh, that a quick response. And uh, that's that's when uh, Latoya I, I told her, and we were I was well I was I still am I still am, and I was very excited that uh, for once we're gonna go there and and. Um, and share uh, the story, and, and for real, you know, for once, uh, tell this, tell the story to a DA, and tell her the narrative. Because remember, in this, like any other case, there's always two narratives, right? That's this is what I told her. It, the The narrative that the police gave to the public is one, mm -hmm. and the other narrative is the one of my wife, my son, and and my son's girlfriend, who were the only eyewitness on that day and and when you know when they everything they told the public it was so erroneous it was so false it was so out of out of out of context it didn't really of course for they for them it makes sense but for us it didn't because right. it, it really didn't 
So we told her that we got, I mean, we, um, we don't have the physical evidence, but I think uh, there's a lot of, um, uh, I, I told the DA, I said, listen, in, in all reality, uh, you, when you, the evidence is, is on the 911 call. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, for me, if you listen, if you listen to carefully, and on the 991 call, you 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 will find out that this is just a small kid, a small kid, and when he uh, he was questioned by the by the dispatcher, uh, he was contradicting himself so much it didn't make any sense because he was only 15 years old, and probably and probably afraid. So when the dispatcher was asking questions, he would um, he would answer. Uh, it, it wouldn't make any sense the, the way he was uh, answering the questions. For example, the dispatcher on, on the phone, because I listened to that, to the 911 call, the dispatcher will ask, hey, uh, Ruben, who, who is with you in your house? And Ruben will say, my mom and my brother and, and my, and my uh, Anna. Okay, uh, do you have any weapons? No. But he wasn't think, being aggressive then. That means he wasn't being aggressive. So I think you were able to have the opportunity to present the case finally. And I think it's a matter too of let people understand too the letter you wrote to the DA. It wasn't like a very like real, real, real long letter, right? No, it, so the, it was very basic, right? Yeah, when I think I saw you, I. Uh, I think I I, I showed the, the the it wasn't a letter it was more like a brief. It was note. an email, yeah. It was a, it was a brief note. All I, because brief note. all I said all I said uh, all I said is this, uh, I I said I, I wish I said I, I I used the word beg you I said I beg you uh, um, to the DA on that brief note I said I beg you to uh, give me a chance uh, we would like to share our story and that's all we were not accusing anything or say, you know, nothing like that. It was just, just give us the opportunity to share the story. And it was very short and precise. It wasn't like, oh, uh, you know, um, uh, it wasn't a long letter. I think you people know? are under the perception that we have to have like this whole case load of like information and have this whole, you know, ready presentation to get to the DA. You know, that's not our job. I mean, we can do those things and tell them the discrepancies happen in the case, right? But it's their job to figure out what was wrong because we're already saying, tell, showing them what is wrong. I think the matter of um, your, your case to me, I think is, is, is important because people have to realize that the ODA was in office 52 years. Ruben got killed almost six years ago. Most people will take that answer and say, you know, hey, the DA has already told us not going to indict, we're gonna take for the answer. Well, you went to the office that morning, you simply said to her, we asked her, it happens in other states. Why can that happen in my state? And she told you then, you know, it can, right? Yeah, re remember uh, how mm -hmm. it all, it all it, this all started. Why, why, why it took me, because she's been in office three years now. And I think, mm -hmm. yeah, I think the, uh, the Commonwealth Attorney in Virginia, they're, they're, so they are elected for four years. And remember, she's gonna run again. I think her um, very, very soon. But why, why it took me so many years to make that phone call? It, it all, it, it just it originated by the uh, well, one of the messages that you guys sent. You know how we get communications in our groups that go back and forth, and we share things that are happening all through all throughout the United States. Well, one one came in, and I read it. And it was, it was about this 18 year old kid in, in California. California. And, 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 and the, uh, Mrs. Lacey, the, the DA um, uh, uh, decided not to, not decided to, for, to throw away his case pretty much. The DA in California threw away this kid's case. And the new uh, Mr. Gaston, the new selected DA came into place and he promised because he saw a lot of discrepancies and people talking to him. He said, if you select me, I promise you that I will open this case and all that and he did. Hmm. And, and hold and behold, you know, and what happened, the, the case was closed just like Rubens was. And when the, the new DA, and we're talking about the case in California, when he came in, he immediately, when he took office, he opened the case 
and did a and did an independent investigation, and the result was the the, the criminal the criminal police the, the cop was found guilty, and now he's in jail wow. paying. Wow! Wow! So, so, so when I saw when I read that. Something, something, something clicked in my head, and that's when I picked up the phone and called to Latoya. I say, look, hey, as I call her sister. I say, Latoya, hey, sis, I just read this. I feel like I should call. You know, I told, I told, I feel like I should call my my DA and see what happens. And Latoya said, go for it. She said, go for it. I mean, what is the what is the yeah? You got nothing to lose. What what is the worst thing that can happen? Maybe she will say no. But at least you need to, you need to. So I pick up the phone and call. And look, where are we now? We are, the case has been open. And, and she told us, she, she, I don't know if Latoya was still there when she told us. And she was very, ang very angry with the, yeah, previous, so uh, with, the, with the previous administration. I said, listen, I am going to look into this, but I tell you this. Remember what you said? It's not going to take, it's not going to take four days. Right. It's not going to be all right. Like saying we're gonna do a very uh, thorough, thorough um, investigation on this independent, and then he mentioned how how they had how, how the, the, there are many ways to do independent mm -hmm. investigation with other groups. They had no they they had no bias against anything. Now independent, where they come and do the the in, you know as the name implies. They're not affiliated with the police in any kind of way. Yeah, yeah. Right, but it's not it's not going to be the police. Right. It's not going to be the police investigating themselves. It's going to be an outside group who's going to come and and look at look at everything. And that's what she said. And and and, and she was very um. We were very upset for. Uh, I don't understand, but I can see her her facial expressions, and I can see where she was really listening, and she was writing down a lot of things and all that. So, so I am um, I am very uh. Opt, optim, optimistic that um, that at least for in five years someone came in and and, and listened to us for the first time right. and and you know and I think uh, even as we speak uh, like La Latoya told me there are many families there are many black and brown families that they never been heard yeah. there are there are a lot of families out there they have not given the opportunity to share the narrative. Oh. Yeah. And and I, I'm just I'm just excited. Of course, you understand that none of this is gonna bring is gonna bring our kids back, yeah. and and it's and it still hurts like hell every day, you know. Can we but, um, can we put a picture of your son up so that we we see um we like to see the humanness of uh of our loved ones. And you guys keep in mind too. Ruben was 15, so these pictures a lot of times we'll take pictures of our kids doing photos, this is it. He was 15. So it's not like he has like old photos. It was a 15 year old kid who they shot and killed. 15 year old child, literally. And yeah. then four that decided not to indict. Um, like I said, again, Oscar's case is very important. It's all, all cases are important. However, what's going on right now, that case is important because of when we're trying to, we say to each other, we want to prosecute the police, or, or, or you know, like we want to have different avenues on how we can get things done, right? Mm -hmm. We can hold like this. Uh, we can hold the elected like, officials accountable. When I went to meet with Oscar, I told her, I was like, you know, you got the vote now. What you gonna do with it? Because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. They all go into the office. They'll go to the churches. They go to the schools. They kiss babies. All kind of stuff. They get the vote. And when it comes time to be heard, it's like you got to make an appointment. Okay, make the appointment, but actually hear these people out. And this DA took the time out to hear Oscar out. Now, we're not even saying, we don't even know that she could not do it with a case. We don't know. But it's a fact of the matter. We have to still be able to exercise our rights as people. That's and that's right. the main thing. Oscar was able to exercise his right as a person, understand that that's not the end of, uh, and that's not the end of it all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's always a way to redress stuff. That's a, the message I'm getting from this, this story this evening that, you know, even though the first DA didn't do due diligence, you know, because he was, uh, you know, he was connected in the way that he had power for so long, 52, you know, and power can corrupt people and absolute power can absolutely corrupt you.
right? Yes. You have unfettered power for a long period of time. You just don't feel like you got to do nothing but sit up and just be powerful, right? But the thing what, which re really um, strikes me about your story is that when the DA changed, right? We can vote in people who see our way. I say, I, 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 I we have to use all the tools in the in the sure. tool straight up. We got to sure. we got to hold people accountable. When we can't hold them accountable, we vote. If they don't want to be accountable, vote their asses out and vote somebody in who will do what we want them to do. We have that power, y'all. And what we're hearing from this evening is, is Oscar. Mr. Oscar is using his power for his family and to get justice for his son. And I'm going to say this too. When uh, Oscar called my phone and said he was going to have a meeting with her, I even told him, I said, I said, you're lying. Because we're so used to them ignoring us, you know, and we're so used to having to send out these mass forms of emails to get one kind of response back. I think Oscar called me on a Saturday. And I think by that two, by the next day, he called with the idea on a Saturday. He filled it out on Monday. He sent a simple email over, really basic, saying what he wanted done. And not only did she email him back, but after the meeting, I also emailed her as well and told her, I said, you know, listen, this is what transparency looks like. Any kind of transparency, any kind of accountability at all, because we as the people who say, you know, all the time, we want to hold people accountable. But we don't do it ourselves, you know, and we have to follow through as well. And I told her, don't just tell him to get him a meeting and don't do so. She even gave him a good little timeline. That way he's not sitting at home to him this finger. She said, I told Oscar, we'll be tomorrow, I'll take a little bit of time. But she gave him just a timeline of some kind of honesty. We have to start holding people accountable for what their elected jobs are for. Okay. Yes. She said, she told us, by, she, said, she told us, it's not going right. to take. She said, when she said she's not gonna, it's not gonna take four days like the other guy did, mm -hmm. because the other, I told her uh, when he, I saw, I remember, I remember when I saw on the TV, on the TV news on that night when he gave the the, the final decision to the public uh, uh, through on the TV, uh, he and, and he closed the case in four days, and, and he, I felt like he was throwing away, like uh, getting trying to get rid of an animal. Because no investigation, there is. They didn't do an investigation. He they just wanted that. I, I don't know who was going in their minds, but maybe they thought, oh, it's just another little Mexican. That's you know, it's not no big deal. But um, the, the 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 new DA was very upset, and and she keeps emphasizing that it's not going to take for days. But as she told us, she gave us a timeline. She says that that uh, perhaps maybe she said um, by September. She said by September, Oscar, I should have something. And that, I mean, I don't know how many cases she told us. She has a big pile, a big pile of, of cases, but it's not, it's not, that's not, September is not that long, long way. Meaning that- You are waiting six years, right? Yeah, meaning, meaning that she's got, you know, she really meant it, that she's gonna go to work. And I don't know if you, if you noticed, I don't know if you noticed the demeanor on her and the other attorney, the, the assistant that was with her. She, they were like on fire. I felt like mm -hmm. they can they couldn't wait to get on that case because they told us that were you were you there, uh, Latoya, when when she told us that when she came into the office, and and mm -hmm. she she was cases away. Yes. 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 The, co yes. the corruption, the corruption, the, mm -hmm. the corruption that was there. I said, I came into office and I don't, I don't work for the police. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't work for the police. But for the community, she said. And that's yes. another thing too. She said to us, you guys, we say all the time, that's, that's important for them to understand when you get elected, you're not elected for your own personal agenda. You are elected for the benefit of the community. And it is important, like I said, I myself am learning the importance of not just the national vote, but the local votes as well. The DAs, not just the governors and the, you know, the DAs, the attorneys, all those people, those people matter when it comes to cases like this. You, somebody should not be in office for 52 years. If you're in office for 52 years, you are now cultured. Your culture is what you want to do. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he was elected. You guys remember the, the the this county for many years. He was on he was on office for fifty years because he gets elected every 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 four years. He got elected from from four, for so many years because uh, at that when when he when this and Manassas, Virginia was not always uh, 
the, the citizens of Manassas was not always uh, uh, Hispanic. Not too long ago, maybe 20, 10 years ago, there was very few Hispanics in Manassas, Virginia. Mm -hmm. But as the community, you know, the, the, you know the, the, the Latino community came, oh, and started, you know, yeah. go. Now it's different. That's why now there's there's not the uh, let's put at that time when ever uh, ever was was uh, selected there was like uh, 80, 80 percent participation maybe the uh, uh, which uh, um, what you call uh, Anglo-Saxon people, mm. but now things have changed in twenty years. The community, uh, the community, the community is it, it, no, it's no longer there. Maybe the, the 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 vote of the white people is much less. Than it was back then. And yeah, now it's right. more Hispanics now. But I think too that goes back to back to voting, though, right? Mm -hmm. um, it shouldn't be fifty-two years of this man got to reside in office. As the community is getting to change, they have to say, okay, hey, we're change. Let's let's also change who's running in the office right now, right? We got to right. change them. It can't be fifty-two years this man sitting here in office. The Spanish community is changing, and it is changing like this with the officer man the same. That was going to change on our side, then. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And also, it's, it's very important that uh, I'll be, um, you know, if, uh, when you guys have time, if you want to look into the, the DA in California, I think her last name is Lacey, Lacey or something like that. On, on that part, I follow her for the longest time because she was kicked out by the, by the community. And, and I, I didn't know that. She wasn't, she, she, I don't think she was, given the opportunity to finish her term because the people were so angry. I, still, I don't remember what, why were the reasons, but the public in that, in that county in California was infuriated by her and she was kicked out. People hated her and she, was, she, she, had, she, had, to, she had to go. So that told us another thing that we as people had the power to kick people out of the office, even when they're in office. That's right, you that, know? Part, that part. Well, uh, Mr. Oscar, make sure you keep us posted on the results of the um, the uh, investigation by this new DA, because we would love to hear how that works out, right? And uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, we don't definitely, you know, we we usually have an ask or action at the end of our podcast, but this evening, you know, hopefully, what we're talking about is is instilling some hope in some people who have felt like. They, you know, they've ran out of options or they, they can't redress. Um, please be continue to be hopeful. Don't give up fighting for your loved ones. Mm -hmm. It's important. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. you know, fighting some some fights, you know. I one of my favorite fighters is Muhammad Ali, right? And he would do rope a dope. He didn't win every round, but mm -hmm. he had a whole lot of championships under his belt. And so we're in it to win the championship. And sometimes that re that requires that we lose a round or two here and there. But don't give up. Stay in the fight. Stay in the fight. Yeah. When well, we don't use our voices and we don't use our power, then people who are that are not working on our behalf, whether black, black, brown, or in between, right? They get to choose. They get to make the choices for us, and we are the ones that are supposed to make the choices for us. We alone. I'm going to say this real fast to um, just kind of just to piggyback off of Oscar's situation and what's currently going on in my story for the Xavier's case too about staying in the fight. Um, when Oscar, like you said, you've been in the fight for six years. Um, it is, um, I had a horrible day today. Horrible, horrible day today, right? Um, as y'all know, we have filed the Xavier's case and the judge is going to, be, the judge is pretty much wanting to grant qualified immunity for the troopers, right? As Roxanne was saying today, I had to learn too. This is a blow. Um, it's like a punch in the gut, but I learned I had to go like this and kind of pick it back up and keep moving forward. I got to learn how to strategize to be able to move forward. And that's what the fight is about. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Um, I got my cup of water, right? I drank that water and I'm still running on because I know I got to keep moving forward. A lot of times with our cases, what I'm learning is that we fight for justice. We're not fight. we fight for our kids, yes. We're fighting for the injustice going on in the world right now on a daily -day basis. This podcast hopefully will move somebody to understand just because that DA told you 10 years ago, we're not going to indict. His ass want to be all or more. Approach the new DA. The letter Oscar wrote to the DA, I'm telling y'all, was something very simple. But he poured his heart into that note. 
It was like a note and told her what he wanted. We have to do the exact same thing. We can talk all day long, be in the streets with our bullhorns all day long. But are you applying the right pressure to the right person? If you're not, then a point. So if you know who the DA is, they're old. And then make sure, too, though, you're doing the, the uh, research on the DA. Because if you got the same person who was in there like the last 10 years, you get the same kind of results. Don't waste your time. But mm -hmm. still, at least, at least try to avenue out, you know? It's not important. You can't, do they say all the time, the only shot you miss is the one that you don't see. Right, right. Yes, yes. yes. And, and can I just add that I love the fact that um, Latoya, who is a, born to fight she's a born leader born fighter that she was she was um there to to provide support to the brother when he went to meet with the da we need to support more um each other more we all had the same pain all of us who who are impacted families and you know get into the the rhythm of not just you know his that case or this case but supporting all the cases that you can whether whether by um, looking at our list that we have and making some phone calls or, or or doing an email, but support one another because there's unity, there's power in unity. When we stand together, there's power in that. And and the people who have the power know that. They know that. Yes, they, they do. They know that. And so we we are determined to fight not one inch back, not one inch back. Not Amen. Inch back. Amen. Amen. It was nice talking to you this evening, Mr. Oscar. Thank you so much, everyone. This has been Life After the Impact. We'll see y'all next time. Stay in the fight. All right. Good thank night, you. Guys. Good night. They got to realize, too, the importance of either of her case to them being qualified immunity in that area. When families stick into the fight and people got to realize too, when it comes to civil lawsuits, people love to say, oh, it's blood money. No, it's setting precedents for other cases that are behind these cases. So you can prove a point. So it's very important her family sat in the fight and is stuck in the fight. So it was realized that you can, you can be called on immunity. You got to stick in the fight. You got to be persistent and consistent in order to, to be called on immunity. Your, your family actually did, you guys did it. Yeah, and, and exactly what you're saying. Also, you know, it's there's so many families that are gonna experience those times when they're trying to force us to take a settlement, force us to just drop it, scare us out of it. It's happening so much, you know, yeah. and I understand it's a scary place for families to be. I knew with my brother's case specifically and the evidence we have, once it's actually pulled out, you know, you'd it's it's there. They the whole world. Then, yes. It, and, and, you know, I feel bad for families if we don't have the evidence, if we don't have the videos, if there were no witnesses. I'm thankful that we eventually, you know, it took years to get what we got, but I am thankful that we know the truth because it's what I always knew, but I didn't have the physical evidence. And now we do. So I tell families, you know, fight, fight it. Yeah.